There's one person I want to introduce you to now. You probably know who she is. This is Aurora. We're ridiculously colour coordinated. This wasn't our <laughs> We, we, we didn't mean to just like turn up in orange, did yes. we? Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. We did. We went. Aurora like texted me earlier. She was like, you don't wear orange, don't bother to show it up. Yes. I've got so many questions um, that were put together by um, not only just me, but uh, also loads of your fans as well. So lo loads of your fans have got loads of questions and we're going to start. I could start with a really deep one or I'm going to start actually with the um, animal video. Tell me a little bit about making that animal video, the one that we just saw there now. It was very late. I was in LA, which is a very different city from what I enjoy normally. Pick up the LA crowd, yeah? What? You don't like LA? Um, I prefer different cities than LA. <laughs> and, but I went there because I wanted it to look, because it had the right vibe for me, because I don't, because it's, it's that strange place, I think. It's a very strange place. And we began filming at five in the afternoon, and then over the night. So I just flew in the middle of the tour I had in Europe. So in between two shows, I flew to LA and stayed away for the night and filmed it, ate the eggs. And um, I was driving quite fast, actually. And we had this uh, police and um, we had the police ah, we had the police cars and um, escorting us it was very fun yeah was that the meaning was that the question what did i do why not it was, yes. it was the perfect answer to i don't know what the question was but it was a perfect answer <laughs> i want to know about this. is it just the fact that you're a massive eggs fan yes i do love eggs i eat a lot of eggs because they're very good for your body they have so many vitamins except for vitamin C, so make sure to eat an orange after. Um, it was only free-range chicken, of course, because um, they have to be free-range chicken, or you eat evil. There's evil in the egg, in the unborn children of the hen. Um, but yes, I really enjoy the shape of the eggs, and I love the color they have. I love the way they look, so that's why I wanted them. But also they have quite a strong symbolism, which I will release a clue to you in the nearest future. <laughs> How am I the only one that's on like, the edge of my seat right now? It's like, I want to know what this is. Like, okay, right, fair enough. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to it. But you, you love, um, like your, your videos always mean quite a lot. Like a lot of time and effort goes into making them. It's not just a byproduct for releasing a song, is it? No, no. It's, um, I'm very, I don't know, I don't really see the point in visuals or music or anything I do without it having some kind of meaning you can discover some years later or days after. I don't know, I like the different layers you can put into things and especially because you guys are also clever and I know that you, you, you really see um, all the symbolism that connects the songs and connects even the videos throughout my career and if you go far away enough I think you would see quite a clear story in it all so it's really fun for me it's my biggest passion you said to me earlier that you directed a video recently mm -hmm. How, like is this the first yes video I, you've directed yes I did my de debut debut Yes, I did my debut as a director last Sunday, yeah, and it went really well. I puked. <laughs> I did, eight times. Yeah, I, I actually got some um, virus, I think, because I did actually puke six times while directing the video. <laughs> so it was quite chaotic. I don't know if you asked the band, I don't know what they thought about me, but I did puke a lot. But it went quite well. <laughs> Does that mean that you might be directing videos of your own? Maybe in oh, the yes, near future? Definitely. I, I always co direct my videos. Or like, ooh. I always have. Somebody dropped an egg. Like, yeah. Or like, oh, did, did you? 
it sounded like a raw egg, like a, um, I always direct my own, like the the idea behind every video, because I know, but I want to direct it fully one day, you know, to, but yeah, to be in front and behind camera at the same time. I'll figure out a way how to do it. You could have to clone yourself. Mm -hmm. I've got a question from a fan here. It says, if your music could change one thing about the world and how people think, what would that be? Um, well, it changes from time to time what I really want the world to, or like the people to do with my music. And right now, it's all about perspective and potential. Because I really want people to see how, like, Sometimes the small issues become too big, and the big issues become too big also. Like we have no power to change the things that bother us personally, or that bother us in, in, the, in the world. Um, I don't know, I think it's about seeing that you can actually do quite a lot. And um, step one and step two is especially about, or it's about quite a lot, as you will notice, but one of the things is very much about seeing um, the potential you have when you're healthy. That's that's kind of what you did with um, one of your last singles, Queendom, isn't yes. it? Yeah. Yes, also with Queendom, yes. What was the message behind that when you were getting that out? Um, well, it, it was the, the perfect beginning to it all, because it's about, um, it's kind of like an invitation to all of us, um, a place where you can be safe and love whoever you want to love and, and be shy, but not but, you know, it's, it's weird how, how the world treats introverts when over half of us is, or maybe more, maybe 90% of people is an introvert, at heart at least. Um, and it's so strange to me to see how the world doesn't really listen. And even at school, it begins. Because if you're um, being a part in the class, like lifting your hand and answering the questions out loud, you get a good grade from the teacher, but you know, you should see that everyone knows the answer, but maybe you don't have to, the courage to speak out loud. So it's weird that even from my childhood, the world is not built for introverts and quiet people. Which kid were you when you were at school? Would you put your hand up? No, I didn't pay attention in class. <laughs> um, so well, I got yelled at quite a lot. What were you daydreaming about when you were in class? Um, I was dreaming about quite a lot of things, sometimes quite uh, morbid things, depending what mood I was in, and sometimes quite sweet things also. But I did like to draw a lot, and I did like to take notes. So I like to look down in my book, especially if, if really you, good. If you good were drawing stuff. in class and the, the teacher finds your, your drawing, would they take it off you and like? Mm -hmm. Tell you off about it. Yeah, I got yelled at quite a lot for not paying attention. <laughs> but it's hard for me to to. It was hard for me to sit so much still, and to especially if I was disagreeing with the teacher about a few things. It it annoyed me that it was so strict. A few of the open questions. So I, I was quite uh, <laughs> maybe there's a hen in the ceiling, <laughs> and she's just like dropping off these bombs, <laughs> bombs off. It's the YouTube hen. Yes. It's got 20 million hits. <laughs> um, 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 do you write a lot of songs or sing a lot of songs in Norwegian? What? Do you, do you write in Norwegian or do you write in English? Um, I write mostly in English, but I do, I do have some songs in Norwegian already, but they're very personal, so I have to keep them for myself. I have a few songs on my own language as well, which I will put on my next album after, after step two. I, I've already began making my fourth record, of course. The third one's not even out yet. No, but it's done, so I can't mm. touch it anymore. It's untouchable. Do, so. you, do you feel like you have to like create music all the time? Like you mm. don't take time off from it? Well, I do take time off when I don't feel it. Like, because it's a creative thing and it should be based on um, what you want to do and that you have something specifically to tell or to create, you know, so if I don't have it in me, like a writer's block, it's not really, it doesn't annoy me, because then I just do other things. Well, what do you do to get over writer's block? Some people go for walks, some people go on holidays. I don't know, I don't really think much about it, I quite enjoy it, because then I can do other things. 
it's nice to have a break from the it's kind of like a manic thing when I you know because I write all the time mm. even now even backstage I write music and lyrics all the time so it's nice for me to have some breaks when I don't have it in me what is like uh, your downtime what do you do what do you enjoy doing when you're not making music writing music <laughs> <laughs> no I do paint a lot I like to paint and um, I'm not really good so it's but I like it a lot because it's it's it has no sound and it's so nice to do something that is quiet you know because I work with music all the time and I have so much noise in my life so it's so nice to have a quiet moment I love painting and I love dancing and I love reading and taking showers but I, but I hate taking showers with soap but with like just water I love and yeah I love washing my feet We've covered quite a lot of the senses. Like, we, obviously, in the music, we've got like uh, the, the ears and in uh, yeah, and, like visual with the art. But a question from one of the fans is, what's your favorite smell? Mm, well, I do. I quite like the smell of um, people. I love like the people. I love the way they smell when they are, are a bit sweaty. I really like. This is really like safe. And of course, I like the smell of babies because they're. They smell like they taste delicious, <laughs> and I love <laughs> I love the smell of people that have just had a cigarette. I actually love the smell of that. Love the way it smells. And lavender. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, lavender is like the one that like a lot of people say. Probably not the other three. Yes, um, but I really do. Lavender. If you had the opportunity to collaborate with anybody. If you could collaborate with anybody, alive or dead, who would that be? Well, my biggest dream was to collaborate with um, Chemical Brothers, which I really love, but I have already. I've written some songs with them for their next album. And maybe I would do a live performance with them this summer, who knows. Um, but I would love to collaborate with uh, Gojira, a heavy, heavy metal band from France. And I would love to do something with them. <laughs> so, what instruments do you play? What do you, what do you, what do you primarily write on, and what other instruments do you play? Well, it's hard for me to define if I can play something or if I can't, because I I don't I haven't learned how to play anything. I play everything by by heart, but I'm not I know it. <laughs> it's a really busy hand, <laughs> and I do play piano, of course, quite a lot, but I also play the drums. And I used to play the bass guitar at school, and I played the harp, and yeah. Which one do you wish you could play the best? Like, if you, when you watch somebody play, say if you're like on YouTube and you're watching like a video of somebody playing piano or drums, would you? Well, which one would you think like? Oh, I wish I was amazing at that. I wouldn't want to be amazing at something without experiencing the way there, because it's so nice to get good at something. I don't know. And then you forget here, but you remember it in your body, in your fingers. Mm -hmm. I would love to play the bagpipe really good because I love the way it sounds. Yeah. I really do, seriously. I love the way the bagpipe sounds. And I would play it at all my friends' funerals. Because <laughs> it's, it's such a nice um, funeral instrument. <laughs> yes, I can play at your funeral. <laughs> <laughs> a a baby for mine. Yeah. Um, when you're 110. The last time that we we spoke, we we spoke about your pet Igor. Yes. I, I wanted like to catch He's up. Still alive. Yeah, we did a podcast a little a little while ago, mm -hmm. and um, I just wanted to see how. Number one, to the people who aren't ingratiated to the legend that is Igor, could you tell us who he is and how he's getting on? Um, Igor Septimus the Third is my algae ball and he's about this big he's about he's quite green he should be more green than he is but it's been a bit sunny lately the well, last year it was a bit much too a bit too much sun on him so he lost the green a bit but i put him in the fridge and then he's a bit better but he's an algae ball he's hairy and very nice he doesn't say anything he has no eyes or limbs but he has a heart, I think, and he eats nothing except for the oxygen, oxygen in the water. And maybe you can give him a bit of salt once in a while, because then he. Mm. But, but just search algae ball, 